And now Class 3B will tell the tale of the unicorn who brought stew and cookies. Ha, hello, this is the story of when the unicorn came after the great unicorn dance party and, and brought cookies and stew to all the people who needed them but not the people who didn't need them or, or were, had food intolerances to uh, anything specific in any of the foods. But generally it was very good and everyone liked it. It was very cold and people needed something warm to eat that would make them not feel so cold and and that's what stew and cookies were good for. It was it was winter and there was not a lot of food like on on the grounds and things and then the they came and the the unicorn was like I, oh you you look very cold and very hungry to the people of the village. And and they said yes we are can we have some food that is warm and the unicorn said yes you can have some stew and cookies. The unicorn, the unicorn brought cookies, cookies and stew. Watch out for nuts in the cookie. And then they all had a little dance and they, they dressed a tree of the woods up to look like a sparkly unicorn and that is why we decorate a tree for unicorn dance party. Hooray! Hooray! Greetings strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnetdale. And I'm not Jane Eris Magnetdale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast. We're two queer trans ladies that do, do we talk about what we've played in the week and stuff um, and, and, and the things we've seen and the things we've done and have a bit of a catch up. I've seen a cutie in a, an adorable hoodie. Yeah, I might now be the owner of a couple of oversized Pokemon hoodies and a Team Rocket badge. <gasps> Look at that Team Rocket badge. That's a good Team Rocket badge. I could badge. be a Team Rocket and a big, I've got an oversized Mimikyu hoodie. It's very good. It's got Mimikyu ears and a Mimikyu tail. Yeah. Yeah. I'm me me make you now. Yeah. <laughs> what have you played this week? What, what have you, played, what you week? played? I'll be honest, I have mostly been playing Gloomhaven. That's okay. We can we can I've you know. played a lot of Gloomhaven and oh my god, that game is so good. I, you you seem to have been enjoying it even with an occasional difficulty uh hill to overcome. Yeah, so I got through like the first three or four maybe five levels. Yeah. And that all seemed fine. And then I just hit this fucking wall mm. where, like, no matter what I did, I couldn't work out what to do. Um, like, f f for the story I wanted to, to be, like, following the path of. Yeah. Um, I needed to go, I needed to first track down and then kill this one particular person. Yeah. But the only mission that I really felt like I had the ability to do was furthering the work for the person that you think is super dodgy and you will probably be trying to track down and kill in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did eventually manage to do this one mission which was basically you have to loot, loot not stand on, specifically use a card with the card yeah, the loot, with the card loot action. It. Yeah. Um, five chests in this um, fairly tough dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Like, so there's uh, flying things, so you can't just... Use... There's loads of traps around. Yeah. Thing the first. There's flying things, so you can't just push them onto the traps or pull them uh, onto the yeah. traps. Ah, yeah, because the traps are on the floor, yes. Um, some of the creatures are just tough as fucking nails, like the bears. Yes, I saw those bears fucking take a, like, Two thirds of your health bite out of you. Yeah, there were a couple of times where, like, I just had bad luck with the bears right at the beginning. Yeah, and just went. I guess I don't do this now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's 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 a tough one. It's mm. weird because I like the time I was like, oh, I forgot to bring any cards with loot on them because I generally don't have them. Yeah, that could be a stab. That loot. It could. Um, so I generally don't like keep them in my deck unless it's got something really good on the other side of it. Mm. Um, so I had to like fit out all of my people and then work out, do I bring three or four? 
Because mm. I think anything less than three is going to mean there's not enough loot cards to go around and people are going to get exhausted before we get to the yeah. end. But four, like, the difficulty was so tough because in some cases there were, like, four of those forest sprite things. Yeah. And I was like, that's not good. And, like, one of the starting bears is an elite. And if you thought the brown ones were bad, the grey ones are way worse. Oh god, I hate it when a bear gets an elite ranking. Right. High high level bears. <laughs> high level Damn these high level these bears. These tactical assault bears. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> There's three of them as well. Oh, fuck. I should have sent Goldilocks in there. It would have been mm. fine. Um, yeah, eventually got through that. And that's like that was like a huge difficulty spike. I've yeah. got through that partly because while grinding to try and get through that, I unlocked two, new, three new classes. Yes, uh, one of which sounded overpowered as hell in the best kind of way. Really interesting support class. Yeah, so I've unlocked the Sawbones, uh, who mm. is naturally called McCoy. Um <laughs> He's got quite good damage. He's not super mobile, but he also has like a decent amount of like heal self, heal allies. Yeah. Good like second tier character because I feel like there are the starting tiers. Yeah. Like the ones that will just sort of teach you the game and teach you the, teach you a yeah. few of the mechanics. But, but then you probably don't want to have yeah. a second one of those. Th their core mechanic is like not too complicated, but also like because it's not like it, it, it doesn't have any of the interesting crunchy complexity, it's not gonna get you as far probably. Like yeah, but the the Sunseeker, which is the one that you say is massively okay. Yeah. Um What well, sounded from your description sounded amazing. Uh, oh yeah, they are. They've got like four or five cards that are yeah. like four damage. And if you've got light infused, then you know, add an extra damage and maybe advantage and maybe an experience point. Yeah. It's like, mmm, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's uh like she's also got like loads of four movement and five movement. It's like so she can nip around, but primarily she doesn't even spend much time just like attacking things. Most of the time she's just doing things like Oh, okay. You can have two of your cards back from the discard pile. Mm, not you, not you can have one of your burnt cards back. <sighs> yeah, the, the recyclability on that alone. Like, if that was the whole point of the class was to keep themselves and the other classes, you know, recycled, that would still probably be very good. It's got loads of movement and attack options on it too. Hell yeah! That card is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like, I haven't got the one that um, recovers burns. I haven't kept that, mm. but I have kept the one that is, um, like, it's, because you don't even have to, well, I mean, like, discard it. You're barely going to have that many burns if you can recycle stuff so that less is getting burned. Well, the burned. problem is she's got quite a large hand size. Yeah. So, like, other, like, she'll do one and then yeah. use a stamina potion to get it back out and maybe do, like, somebody else on the team. Yeah. And by that time, it's like, mm, okay, now everyone will probably then do... At least one long rest. Yeah. Also, like if so, if lights infused, that that character can get three cards back instead of two. Yeah. Well, but I have just unlocked the um the stamina scroll. Hmm. The stamina scroll lets a uh, another person on your team recover two cards from there. <whistles> so rather than getting one back yourself, like you do with the stamina potion, yeah. Somebody else can have within range five can have two cards back. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether with this character it'd be worth deliberately using some of your very powerful burn effects just to reduce your hand size so that you're getting your recover stuff from the discard more quickly? Maybe? Like, just like, deliberately get your hand size down? Like, I could see a way of making that a viable strat. Mm. See, because at the moment that is the primary reason why I've been struggling a bit with my, um, I've got a Vermling I can't remember what uh, snuggles or snoogles, I think they're called. Snoogles, yeah. Um, they have like loads of things where they can augment their character. Mm. It's like I can have plus two to all of my melee attacks, mm. or whenever I do a melee attack, I get plus two health. Yeah. Or whenever I do a melee attack, I have two. Uh, I can heal within. I can heal two within range two. Yeah. Good ones all, but you can only have one of those at a time. Mm. Unless you use this one other card I have, which allows you to have two of them at a time. The yeah. problem is, only got a hand size of ten. Yeah. So, without... If you've got, like, 
the um say heal two within range two yeah and the attack plus two and the thing that allows you to have both of those at the same time that's mm. three out of your ten cards gone already yeah so like I would love a way I, and I think that that is a an entirely viable thing but it really ups the difficulty level because you need to have other people who can just keep throwing stamina at them. Yeah. To just keep those remaining seven cards going round and round. Yeah. But otherwise, they would be an absolute beast. <gasps> That's super interesting. Um, I've also got a uh, Berserker class, who's an Inox, yeah. um, who basically relies on being quite low health a lot of the time. Okay, yeah. Like, one of, one of his cards is, uh, like, uh, Attack X, where X yeah. is the difference between your current health and your max health. Yeah, so this is um, deliberately get them into a glass cannon rage state. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, but and... they've also got like a um, like a permanent sit on your thing burn burn card that is uh, the next three times you would be dropped below one health point, <sighs> you just stay at one health point. Oh, nice. It's like, hmm. And, yeah, and I imagine the part of the pull there is keeping the heal healer nearby to be like, I'm going to keep you on some health. Not more than is necessary, but enough that, like, you can survive a hit, and then I'll bring you back up to one hit's worth of survival. Yep. There's one that uh, does six attack just on its own. Yeah. But you will suffer um, half of your current health damage. But then that gets you closer to your other things being more powerful. But if you're already, like, really, really low, it's not going to be a huge yeah. amount of damage, really. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Like, it's a very high difficulty class to play. Yeah. I, like, I feel like that is a uh, is a character I would be way happier playing in person. Yes. There are a few of these classes where I was like, I would love to play this at a table. Where I've yeah. got the cards in front of me, because I think I would make less mistakes if I could sit and look at my cards yes. and have them physically in my hands. The, uh, this is the other problem, of course, of, of playing like three or four characters at once. Yes. In Gloomhaven, you would be playing with a team. And yes, I suppose you could be playing... Um, like passing the mouse around, whatever. Yeah, but like, yeah, you you are here jumping between lots of different yeah. um, rule sets, and therefore you're not properly locking into. Yeah, there's there's a lot one. of time with the picking of cards where I'm not I'm not really thinking specifically about my one card. I think playing this in person would be a whole different experience. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that is a very possible thing that yeah. might at some point happen. I yeah, very possibly. Who knows. <laughs> Um, I mean, we've got Frosthaven Homecoming, so I can't imagine it's going to be that different. Yeah. But fuck me, it's so good. I can understand why it has yeah. sat at the top of the BGG Top 100 for so long. It's, it's and real... also, it's been quite yeah. nice to, like looking more into it recently. Because you remember I said, oh, this is a game no one ever completes. Yeah. People are starting to get, be like, oh, I've completed it. I've com Some people have completed it twice. Well, wow. so I think it was mostly just a matter of time because it's fucking huge. Yeah, it's a big game to get a group of people together and play a bunch. Yeah. yeah. But there are so many characters in there but that potentially you could get multiple groups yeah, and play yeah. as long as no one wants to play a, a a character that's already in use by somebody else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Really enjoying it so far. Um I've just got the wealth level up to level 3. Mm. So now new characters start at level three. Nice. Rather than... And also any characters that weren't at level three got yeah. to automatically go up, Ooh, uh, yeah. which was really nice. And that was partly due to uh, a, like a city interaction. It yeah. just went really, really well. I've got city interactions that are starting to bring up other things. I've currently got like nine missions hmm. just open to me. Just like, you can go over here, or you can go over here, or you can go over there, or go over there and do that, or go over there and do that. Um, the merchant costs me uh, four less gold for everything. Mm. Like, I get big discounts there. Uh, we've The library's growing. You remember I told you about yeah. the library? There's more books in the library, and the librarian is <gasps> very happy with us. Yay! Um, yeah, and, and we're becoming sort of a bit of a local legend. Mm. Like, there was one uh, city mission I did where there, there was a child being, like dragged off by the guard somebody who has given us like advice previously yeah. according to the storyline mm. and i was like we'll just intervene on the boy's behalf <laughs> and we paid the guard off like 10 gold yeah. and now like the kid's like hey you helped us out 
could you maybe help us out again? Like, the whole of this area is really poor and really run down. And we were like, yeah, we'll have a word with the merchants. And it's like, yup, that's up to your reputation. That's helped the prosperity of the city as a whole. Yay! I've made a difference! Yay! And it seems to be putting, like, new uh, city uh, events in based on those things. So I'm guessing that's the envelopes you have in the, mm, the box. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's incredibly deep, and I am fascinated by the story it's trying to tell. I'm glad you're having such a good time. Yay! Yay. Tell me about what you have played. Uh, I believe the thing that we we checked out together until the end, uh, so I'll rattle through some things I've been playing by myself. Um, I started playing some Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon on the Switch. Uh, It is is an action puzzle game, kind of. Um, so really cute pixel art art style using the uh, enemies and the characters from from Puzzle Knight, uh, from Shovel Knight. Um, top down grid view, enemies and obstacles fall in from the top, kind of like Tetris, but they're not shapes. It's always just single square units falling down in straight lines, mm-hmm. and you are trying to clear enemies, not lose your health, and get through a door at the end of the level after destroying a certain number of enemies. Um, the way it works is a little bit... Um, oh, I'm trying to think of which puzzle games do this. Um, d- when you damage a thing, you will destroy a chain of all the things it's touching. So, Ooh. like, uh, up, down, left, and right chains. Mm. So, like, if there is something that's stopping, you know, a big chain from happening, you might just take out an individual enemy or block of one type so something will fall down into place. And like, aha, now I've got a big chain. Yeah. The bigger the chain, the more... Uh, monetary rewards you're given, which you can sort of spend mid-run to buy upgrades. You might buy extra health or a better weapon or something Mm -hmm. mid-run. It's got a bit of a a roguelike structure in that you you get permanent upgrades between runs, but then you go in and you just do the run and see how far you can get. Mm -hmm. Uh, The gimmick to this that I think is really interesting is any time that you damage uh, an enemy, you'll destroy the whole chain of enemies, but you take damage when you hit an enemy. Like, you'll you'll take damage back as you hit it. Okay. So you are very heavily incentivized to take out as big a set of chain as you can at one time. Mm-hmm. Because that's less damage you're taking. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if there's, like, 20 enemies out, if you destroy them all as one chain, you're only going to take, what, maybe two hits if it's, you know, something like that. Mm-hmm. If you deal with them as... Yeah, you know, three smaller groups, that's three times as much damage you've got to take, and yeah. yeah. Um, there are lots of little upgrades that are like temporary things that are given to you mid-run that are randomised to sort of keep things energetic. There will be keys and chests that will fall down, and if you can make the space to go put the key in the chest, you'll get, like, uh, the next 20 hits worth of damage you take will be negated. Um, so, like, ah, I can be a bit more reckless, or... Hits will do twice as much damage. Cool, I'll attack those things that usually do me damage back because I kill them before they get a chance to fight back. Mm-hmm. Um, you get rewarded for, like, you know, the the speed at which you go through, but the game's got some good accessibility settings for, like, you can slow down the pace of the game, automatically make stuff fall out or slow down, you know. There's a lot of settings as well for... If you don't want to have the health element you have to think about with this, and you just want it to be a puzzle game where you match the things, Mm -hmm. you can turn off the health bar, and just the only thing that would cause you to lose is if the full screen fills up and you haven't gotten rid of enough puzzle pieces to uh, clear the screen. Uh, So that's kind of nice. Like There's a good variety of custom ways to play it. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm having fun. I was going to play it as the start of like, a, oh, I don't know what I'm going to try. I'll play a couple of indies stream the night before this. Spent my whole stream playing. It was good fun. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also started playing Monster Rancher DX, which got ported to the Switch. Monster Rancher DX. Do you have any awareness of Monster Rancher as a thing? No. So 90s anime um, in that sort of Pokemon Digimon era, um, mm, yep. the la- the least known of these, but it had maybe the coolest gimmick for its video game. Right. Um, so, you know, you've got your Yu-Gi-Oh! where they're like, ah, the, the creatures in the cards are from ancient stone tablets from Egypt. Monster Rancher has that, but it's circular stone tablets that become CDs. On the original PlayStation 1 game, you could put a CD 
into your PlayStation 1 right. and summon a monster that would be unique to the CD you'd put in. Okay, so what if Barcode Battler was a CD? What if Barcode Battlers were CDs? Right. Yeah, it was a really neat gimmick. Like, you put your favourite album in, ah oh, heck, now I've got a cool monster. Now I have the power of Jared Wayne. Uh, yeah, well, well, I'll get to that in a second. So I was like, I was like, I remember this game very fondly. I'm very curious what they're going to do about it on Switch because I can't just put a CD in, you know. Yeah, it has a database of albums um, and artists in there, and I don't know how they have legally gotten away with this. But you type in an artist name or an album name, and up to like very recent stuff, it is in the game. Is it playing the music? Is not playing the music. Okay, but like, well, I imagine you can just. I, list... I, look, as someone that has tried to mention music related things in books before, I know it can be a rights minefield. Um, but, like, yeah, I, I typed in My Chemical Romance and got, like, uh, oh, there. They've, they, had, they didn't just have the studio albums as well. There was, like, Life on the Murder scene was on oh, there. Yeah. I was like, oh. I tried to get Life on the Murder scene. They were like, oh, no, you need the council's approval for that rare and valuable monster. I'm like, Oh, oh! I picked I picked a weird B side, and it's telling me there's a rare monster inside. I think this is a sign. <laughs> it um, is. It's a sign yeah. that they are also eating. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I yeah I, I I did a stream with the uh, with the lovely James Stephanie Sterling yesterday. Yeah. Um. Where they were playing this, and he, I was like, yeah, I need to play this now. We My friend. Yeah. Our best friend That's who was fair. who was just a. A, a slime blob that you know looked like they were just walking around stimming so we were like yeah neurodiverse gender fluid slime friend you are literal the best literal gender fluid yeah literal gender fluid gotcha. um so on like a pokemon or something you're not going out searching for monsters you put your cd you get your monster you go that's my monster um and then you train them and you do sort of various training with like to raise raise stats and there's like a re there's sort of a calendar aspect where you're getting closer and closer to tournaments and then you've got the combat system so when you're doing these tournaments uh I, I, the combat system's really interesting so you use the zl and zr buttons to move closer and further away from the enemy sort of it, it's all about spacing mm -hmm. and the attacks you have will have two attributes it'll be like how much energy you need to use this attack and what spacing you need to be from the other creature in order to use it. Okay. So the other creature's moving back and forth, and that's making it a little difficult, and you're trying to be like, right, I want to use that tentacle whip attack, which is like sort of a couple of spaces back from, from the start, so I'll sort of get closer, get closer, at use the attack. Okay. Um, and there are a bunch of stats that, are, that affect like likelihood of hitting or physical damage and stuff like that each week, but it's generally how... How good can you get at positioning your character to get the hits in? Um, it's a very simple combat system. It's very unique and it's kind of kind of fun. I I kind of dig it. Um, yeah. The game has aged in some regards, but like, there's something weird and endearing about this this game mm. that I kind of still love. So Monster Rancher kind of holds up. Yeah. Um. I played some lawnmower simulator. How's that? Uh, do you like the idea of very calm and methodically just like neatly mowing a bit of a thing of grass and maybe it's an unusual shape and just sort of looping around doing circuits but getting all of it and maybe maybe the, the job is like, hey, you've got to be careful about my flower bed so you don't quite do it to the edge and then you get the streamer and you sort of just do the edges gently and then at the end you've done a perfectly neat and organised got everything job. That sounds satisfying. It's very satisfying. Also it's... outdoors. Yeah, it's... But fuck all. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a very good, I just kind of want to be a perfectionist for a while and slowly work on a task. Hmm. Uh, the career mode is kind of like uh, your road truck simulator in that you've got your, you make money for the job that you use to fund your things to expand your empire mm. if you want. But you just... a lawnmower yeah. rather than renting one. Yeah, exactly. But you can just like go. Now nah, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna mow some lawns and not worry about that and have a nice chill time nice. with my ride on a strimmer. <laughs> uh, it's mm -hmm. on. It's on Game Pass at the moment, and right. it's it's very chill if you're someone that likes methodically working through things and going. Yeah, did it. Perfect. Heck yeah. Um, I think the last thing I played before we go back to the thing we played together. Uh, was Mind Scanners, 
which is another game that is on Game Pass that is super interesting, if a little dystopian. Um, so it is set in a sort of near future that is, I'm... It seems implied to be a fascist state, maybe, may, maybe a religious fascist state, perhaps? Um, and a big part of the, the fascism that's going on is all to do with, um... It seems like it's to do with labelling undesirable types as uh, insane so they can be sort of dealt with or removed from society. Uh, there is there is that kind of a thing going on, and you are working as someone who is working within this system because they've taken your kid, and you're like, I need to find a way to get to my kid, and that unfortunately means engaging with the system in which I find myself. Mm. Um, it plays kind of like a Papers, Please, but less brutal on the timing. Um, right. You know how in certain, like a Papers, Please, you've got to do a certain amount of work every day to make your money, otherwise... Yeah. Your yeah. family will starve and die exactly. and run out of medication. Yeah, and the, you know, the game will throw at you like, ah, here's a person who maybe shouldn't be subjected to what the system is doing, but you are not going to make money if you don't subject them to it. Yeah. Papers, Please was always very, like so short on money all of the time from moment one that it was really hard to do the right thing. Mm. This definitely gives you more room to do the right thing more often than not, and that is appreciated. It helps to make it feel a bit more manageable. Um, mechanically, what you do is every day you've got a certain amount of time in the day. You go pick a person, uh, you do a little uh, quiz where they'll talk about what their dreams have been about, and you try and sort of go, I think this is what that means, and you get an idea of the person. And then you will make a judgement on, do I mark this person as needing psychological help within this system, or do I say, no, I think they are fine, the system, it is not in their best interest to be put through the system. Um, and... You know, some of it is very clear, some of it is very clear, some of it is like, oh, I've been sent to you because you're a political activist and they're really hoping I'm just going to mess your brain up a bit so you stop being a political activist, things like that. Some of them are a little more like, I genuinely don't know. Um, a good example being, I went and saw someone who was convinced that um, she was being stalked by shadowy agents and I was very like, it is entirely possible in this world that this is true. But also, if it is not, and you are having a mental health crisis, it is probably not healthy to not help. And, mm. you know, it, it was it is an interesting, if occasionally kind of flawed game. Um, mechanically, if you decide someone, you know, is, is, is going to go through the, the, the mind scanner system, you then do a bunch of minigames, which are basically like, um, it might be turn the control of, like, fairly slowly, but not so slowly because you're on a time limit. It might be uh, match the symbols that are flashing in this person's eye to the ones on the thing, or make this shape sort of look like that shape and pop them in. Mm -hmm. um, there are some meters to balance while you're doing that. There is um, stress, and you've got ways of lowering a person's stress, but like if you mess up on a thing, it'll raise their stress and that'll take. you'll then have to take time out to, to bring it back down. Mm. And there is... Um, level of their own personality that is still there. Mm. Um, because you are making sort of tweaks and changes to this person's brain, and, you know, there are ways to, you know, it's going to take extra time and it's going to be more difficult to do, but there are ways to bring that back up so that, like, you are not making them lose their personality. Mm. Or, if you're in a rush, you could, you could not do that and get the money and get out. Um... Game game definitely is very, like, yeah, that's not the right thing to do, and is very clear about that up front, um, which is, you know, it's, it frames this in the right way. Mm. Um, mechanically fascinating game. Um, the biggest complaint I have about it is maybe not even a complaint, it feels like a deliberate choice, but it's one that feels uncomfortable, but deliberately so, which is every person you interact with as this mind scanner, your options are to label them sane or insane, and that is your choices. And that lack of nuance feels deliberate, and like a deliberate sort of pointing to the nuance-lacking terrible system in which this dystopia is set, mm. but deliberately making the player feel uncomfortable is still making them feel uncomfortable and be aware of that. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's a really neat game. 
I'm glad I gave it some some time and gave it a try. Nice. Should we talk about that Unreal 5 Matrix demo on that? That's Xbox? a thing, isn't it? Yeah, we, we did that. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, so I discovered it on an Outside Extra video. Yes. Fuck me, was I not watching the game? Oh, game we'll tools? talk about the Game Awards in a bit. <laughs> I have I have thoughts. I have things to share. Um, we'll get there. Yeah, so it is. it starts off as a very low interaction... Uh, action game, yeah. where you are shooting tyres out from police cars that are chasing you yeah. and agents leaping out of windows at the back of your vehicle, and then you are just this character having a bit of a wander around and yeah. just enjoying, like, here is our fancy new engine and here is some lighting yeah. and you want to see how much how much of buildings we can <laughs> create and, you know, various landscapes yeah. and... Do you want to drive across it with really floaty driving controls? Yeah. Do you was... want to turn all the lights out and watch you go? Or do you just <laughs> sorry. Do you want to turn the sun off and just watch all the the lights coming on and how beautiful it looks, just yeah. lit from all these individual light yeah. points? This this is not built to feel good being a video game, but it is built to be a technical showpiece and it sure does excel at that. Oh yeah, it it reminded me of the the whole thing about um the Mandalorian that they're mm. set like their their backdrop set is like a floor to, to ceiling LED sc like massive LED screen that like people behind the scenes can do. Oh, you just want to rock. Yeah, I'll just on the touchpad yeah. just flick that over to the screen. Oh, we'll just turn it round a bit. There we go. And yeah. it, it looks good, and like I'm guessing that's more of the sort of thing this is for than necessarily I mean, aimed specifically at gamers. I but... mean, I I saw a really good uh, Twitter thread by developer Mike Bithell talking about like the the ways this works for games, and like uh, uh, I'm gonna slightly butcher this, but the the short version was movies have their like, hey, we're not gonna build a city to shoot our film in. We'll go to a city that already exists. You know, because that is that is the cheaper thing to do if you want. That to... is an existing asset. Yeah, that is an existing asset, and you can't really use existing assets as they currently are in video games to make things because it's they're either not going to fit together with each other or they're going to look generic and mm -hmm. um, yeah. This or you're going to have yeah. to spend a fuck ton more work and have a lot yeah. of talent that not everybody is necessarily going to yeah. have, especially if they're small or single person yeah. teams. And if you look at this demo and what is being bundled in with Unreal F uh, Unreal Engine 5, it sure seems like it is the tools to have a pretty easy to put together procedural generic city. Um and to go, "Hey, do you want to make a bigger budget thing in a big city but that is outside of your scope and budget? Unreal Engine 5 will give you the lighting tech you need and the city full of cars AI you need, and the it's really easy to bang out some realistic looking, different looking to each other people with this, and the some of them are all very average looking. Yeah, yeah but that's that's what it's for. It's do you want to fill out a city with average looking people, cars that behave like cars, lighting that works like lighting, and particle and collision impacts that seem right? Mm -hmm. Cool. There's a city you can set a game in. That is, and I mean. Yeah, that is a that sure is a tool that is going to be it's going to be a bit of a one-stop shop for people that want to make a thing but don't have the people or the budget or the time to make a thing. I'm sure it does other things as well, but Yeah, but like yeah, thinking about some of what that did. Yeah, I can see how that'd be really useful. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, it is a it is an interesting pretty visual showcase. Yes. Video games they're happening. Mhm. Mm uh, did you play anything else this week? I played a little bit of Age of Calamity. It's yeah. Most, uh, I just fancied killing like a large number of things. It Sometimes, must have, must yeah. have been t enough Tories going around that <laughs> that uh, set me off. But there we go. Yeah, it's it's nice to just have that bit of a power fantasy now and again, and yeah. just go try and save the world for a bit with various adorable Zelda characters. Yeah, always fun, and that. Is everything I play <gasps> this week? Well then, time for this. Are you feeling pressurised by traditions of Christmas? Is the fact that you feel compelled to spend time with people who stand for the very worst of everything because you're related? Is the expectation to provide more than you can afford in ill-thought-out gifts and more food than you'd usually eat in a month getting you down? Then join us for Unicorn Dance Party. 
We encourage keeping things simple and manageable. Going for as long or as little as feels good to you. Cookies and stew. Hanging out with friends. And we're firmly against forced gift giving. Compelling anyone to be in the same room as some xenophobic, racist, bigoted, right wing bellend who believes in Q or that Jewish people run the world through shadowy manipulation. Wasted food that could easily have been extra donation to those in food poverty. Tories. Hanging out with family that you don't like. Plus, if you're into decorating a tree, as long as it's pointy, it can be used to represent the magical unicorn horn, so you don't even need new decorations, unless you want them. But wait, there's more! We embrace the spoopy, so if you want to combine Halloween decorations, it won't look out of place at all. And best of all, it can be whenever or wherever you want. So, if you're stuck for a celebration, why not celebrate Unicorn Dance Party with whoever and however you want? Are you tired of people? Oh, constantly. Had just enough of creepers and weirdos? Oh, just leave me alone. Just want to be left alone to get on without someone hoisting their existence on you? Oh, please. Try Observe Away. Take one with a cool glass of water or a warm glass of marbles, and then within minutes, you'll be left completely alone for up to eight hours. Plus, if you want the effect to end early, just look at yourself in the mirror and lick your lips seductively. Observe Away, for when you don't want to see or be seen by anyone. Oh, thank God. So, <gasps> what have you put... Ah. I'm gonna get it out of the way. I watched the Game Awards. Ooh. I I watched the Game Awards with a very specific aim in mind, which is like, look, people are gonna watch the Game Awards. Come watch them with me, where I'll tell you about the abuse of the various companies as they come up on screen. Who you know you might not have heard about their abuse shit going on. Um. So yeah, here's how I would summarize the Game Awards. Jeff Keighley comes on stage and goes, "You know what? It's really important that we take a stand against unfair treatment of workers." in the games industry. I'm not gonna say who or what they did, but it's important. And then he slinks off stage and we get an evening of adverts for Quantic. Ubisoft games and Riot Games stuff and Quantic Dream is the big fucking one. Um, they, he, Jeff Keighley made a big fucking deal about not having any adverts from uh, Activision Blizzard because they are currently the hot story. But like so many other studios that have unaddressed abuse of employees got their time in the spotlight. Mm. It was a lot of watching going, oh god, re mm, mm, really? Mm. With your opening and, and this is who you followed up with. It, it, was, it, was, the, it was the most obviously pathetic pandering bullshit yeah. weasel nonsense yeah. I've ever fucking yep. seen. Yep. Like, yep. I'd have rather... Jeff is apolitical, you know? I'd have rather he said nothing. It annoyed me more that he tried to sound like he was taking a stand and then... Like, you can't do the whole, like, tearing up, like, it's, it's really important that we stand up for workers. Anyway, here's Riot Games advertising music at you. <sighs> no, thank you. No. No, thank you. No. For, for Quantic Dream in particular, because a bunch of people in that chat did not know, hey, Quantic, Quantic Dream uh, had a real culture of homophobia and racism and transphobia within the company, sending company-wide email threads of photoshops of staff members that were really abusive. Mm. Um, David Cage was in those email threads and laughing along. Don't support Quantic Dream games. No, thank you. Uh, how about you, what you watched? Uh, um, <laughs> Sorry, have I hit you for hit you sideways a bit with that? Also, I thought that might go on a little bit longer. Um, nah, it's fucking game adverts. We watched some films together. We did. Where do we want to start? Let's start with the 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 other two Cube movies, shall we? Uh, well, mm, um, <laughs> so we watched two Cube two Hypercube. Yeah, and we watched uh, Cube Zero. Yes, we did. So, do we start or end on the big caveats? Uh, all of them include an arsler. Yeah, all three movies in that series contain an arsler. We we almost thought Cube Zero wasn't it's, coming to. That's so funny because literally I was just about to go. Oh yeah, we made it through Cube Zero without an arsler. It and literally as... finished the sentence. It was... Yeah, it it was. You couldn't have timed it better if 
It's you literally just let your guard down because they they used a <laughs> phrase so near the end. They used a phrase that wasn't the arsler, and therefore I thought we were gonna get out scot free. We were so near the end. Uh um. Yeah, I really don't like the implications of the end. Just skimming ahead as a bit of a caveat. Cube Zero undercuts um a lot of my. Yeah, I don't feel so bad about Cube One's. Um... I think if Cube One had avoided being autistic coded, and yeah. Cube Zero avoided being autistic coded and really stereotypically acted. Like definitely yeah. had none of the uh, it had none of the the quality and nuance that uh, you said you picked yeah. out in the first one. Yeah, I, it was it look, was like music level bad. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm, I'm just going to talk a little spoilery because it's an old series at this point. I don't think anyone's going like, to care. Well, Cube Zero was 2004. Yeah. I don't think I anyone's going to like... care too much me talking spoilers about this. So first Cube film has a clearly autistic coded character. Um, Came off not terribly, um, came off reasonably respectfully done, probably because the film was produced um, and the part was acted by someone who worked in a school for autistic kids. Cast autistic people, but there was a believability to his performance I didn't hate. Um, Cube Zero, mm, first of all, it feels like it has to have its autistic coded person because the original Cube did, without it being acted by someone who actually knows what they're doing and you get the whole um, music thing of um, overacted autistic character that really looks like you've learned it off YouTube videos and like I'm aware that sort of sort of head hitting and maybe That's hand thing, flapping. But I do not want to, uh, yeah, to hit my head. Yeah. I'm going to very gently sort of move my head near a wall and that's like head hitting and I'm going to sort of flap my hand. I can't put my finger on where the hand flapping is different. Mm. It's different. It's, mm, it's not the same. Um, but also, fun fact, Cube Zero um, Shaw certainly implies that being autistic is a thing that um, can be done to someone actively and that that's, that's a whole thing that's not great. It's sort of used as a shock punishment reveal twist. Yeah. And that... Mm. I'll, I'll be honest, when I saw it originally, did not understand enough about autism to be like, well, that person is clearly coded autistic. It's like, yeah. that person has some kind of mental health problem. Yeah. And to go to then watch Cube Zero and go, oh shit, that's just what happens when they do the thing to yeah. you. Yes, it's um f first film where it's like, it's presented like it's just a character who happens to be autistic and is like fairly well done. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I don't hate that. It's a bit stereotypy, but it's fine. Or oh, Cube Zero. Cube Zero annoyed me in that regard. But we'll put that aside for a second. We'll just put it in a little box. I really enjoyed Cube 2 and Zero. <laughs> I, I, this is how I talked about the first cube. Yeah. I have to do it again, which yeah. is like, look, <laughs> these things are shitty and I don't support them and they annoy me. I'm still really fucking glad I watched the fascinating <laughs> films. They are fascinating films. Um, yeah, we, we, I think we alluded before Q, uh, Hypercube, the second cube film, um, lacks some of the practicality and charm that the first one had. But yeah. like the the set design, I think in that is less interesting. Um, the special effects are. Uh, very early 2000s no, and they look at... There's one scene which I was really distracted in where it's a spinning CGI something filling a room yeah. and oh, it's like a several minute scene of them being scared of the CGI thing and I'm like, I can't not know that you're just in an empty room going, ah. While someone blows it's... a fan at you. Yeah, it's... Mm. It's a perfect quadratic oscillation, don't you know? <sighs> it's... It's... <laughs> There is there, there is definitely something lost by the move away from practical effects, and there are yeah. certain scenes where it's like you know that that's that's not so great, but also there are some scenes that really fucking work that wouldn't have worked without this weird sci-fi bullshit. And I yeah, like I love this but as the joy of four dimension, yeah. uh, like uh, of like um. Uh, more than three dimensional space or three yes. physical dimensions is the idea that you can take like five lefts to make a complete circle. Yes. Um, or you can go, I've looked through that portal, the one above me, the one below me, the one to the left, the one to the right, and they all look through the same left hand door <laughs> on, on, on an, an entirely different room. Yeah, it's. How do I put this? For um, now. I think that much like the Saw to Saw 2 progression, yes. um, like 
this second... Let's not follow our own rules. Let's... It's, let's not follow our own rules. Let's not be nearly as concise and clear a concept. Mm -hmm. But fascinating, and I don't mind that it didn't answer many questions, in that the questions it created, I have... I have thoughts about, and I find them really interesting. And yeah. I, I, I love, yeah. I love a film that doesn't want to tell you all the fucking answers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cube Zero, <laughs> Cube Zero. I kind of prefer to Cube Two. I think, mm -hmm. I think, I it, think the set design is beautifully yeah. grimy in in just such a nice way. Yeah, like the 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 fact that they've gone back to like the big heavy doors. Yeah, uh, the I... the. The griminess and and uh, texture on on like the walls in the yeah. cube itself. So between Cube and Cube Zero, Cube I think is the better mystery. Yes. Cube Zero, I prefer from a character development standpoint because I really like how it builds up these, largely this relationship between these two people who are. So we yeah we've mentioned this I think before. Cube Zero is entire or, or is largely from the perspective of people overseeing the weird de death maze that's been going on in the last two films. And a lot of it is just really quiet bureaucra bure bureaucrats sitting around while a death game is happening. Yeah. And I love that frame. I, exactly. I think that is like the most fascinating I, thing about it. Like, And the, their characters as well. Like you've yeah. got one who is just like such a middle manager. Yeah. Like you've got to do the paperwork. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do the other. And as soon as you turn it around on him. Yeah. About like oh but aren't these the rules? Shut up and just fucking do what I told you. Because I'm yeah. the manager. I, I, I'm annoyed a little bit that one of these two people in this role is again another savant level super intel intellect. Not because it's tropey but because like. You would never trust a person like that in a position <laughs> like this. We all had, the way through the film. Yeah, like, this person would never have this we, job. We, we, I <laughs> talked, I talked a little bit while we were watching it about that whole like, oh no, you have too much creativity and drive. We're not going to hire you because yeah. you will, you will question your superiors. Guy would never get a retail job. Yeah, like <laughs> or yeah. an office job. Exactly. Like I, <sighs> particularly given the nature of this whole thing, I'm like, you don't give the person with like four dimensional think a billion spatial dimensions ahead control over any of this yeah i you, can think of all the yeah. possible permutations yeah. of the you, next chess move you you get them to make the thing and then you throw them in to die in the thing that's what you do you don't you don't let the the person <laughs> that's what you one would have done i mean yeah and that's <laughs> that is what they sh should have done here <laughs> <laughs> I know that would be no film if they did, but they should have done that here. Um, but like, we also get some very nice comic book art in this. Yeah, um, we get some uh, interesting hero moments from people we don't expect. Yeah, the, we get the, 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 we, we got this brilliant moment where the 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 lift opened and there were people in it, and you were like, "Oh, I didn't want to know anything about the people upstairs." And like five minutes later, you were like, "This person from upstairs is fucking amazing." Oh, it, it wasn't even that long. It was like forty <laughs> seconds. Like, the turnaround from, I, I'm actively disappointed, I don't want to know who's running this, to, oh my god, I want to know who you are, you weird, American strange. cyborg, Rick Mail, come tell me all of, all of your secrets. I, I must know. The... <laughs> he was a fascinating fucking man. Right. Um, <laughs> look, the... Boy, when they said instant paralysis, they weren't kidding, were they? Yeah. Cube Zero <laughs> is, um... I would have... <laughs> I would have, I would have loved to have seen like the Saw series' third instalment be something like this. Just yeah, I'm just sat around watching like the original Saw traps or some shit for a few hours. Yeah, like I want the, I want this kind of like weird other shit in that I other want perspective. Jigsaw and the girl from the second film with the that got yeah. thrown in, in the needle pit, just sitting around eating popcorn watching people. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think he's learned his lesson? No, not yet. <laughs> it's like, he really seems to fucking want to live. Look, I'll tell you when he's ready to live. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, they've, oh, they've not picked up on that Stop clue. Stop playing like, with the puppet! Look, there were like four other clues in the room they could have found. How are they doing this badly? I thought I made a really obvious puzzle. Oh, oh, he moved. Key's gone down the bath plug. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, yeah, because that's the vibe this had. And throwing like, popcorn in each other's mouths. Yeah. I, <laughs> I want to see that version of Saw now. I, I will say there is also the problem that like this film felt like it set some stuff up like it was going to be really important and then just did nothing with it. And I was kind of like, 
I was, like, I was, mm. I was a little annoyed what, at some... Do you, now, do you genuinely think that there was just stuff that they didn't pay off in the film? Or do you think that, once again, they were really hoping they were going to get another sequel? I mean... I, okay, let me talk about one specific example. You don't set up a character as being the super hyper-level intellect that can picture four-dimensional space and move everything around in its millions of permutations, and then just get rid of the problem of the permutations of the of the cube. Oh, okay, the cube's ju it's fine. It's just gonna is it? We're just gonna. Oh yeah. Oh, there's an exit. Ah, oh, how are we gonna find that that mysterious other exit? Oh, 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 we just found it. Like there it, things like the the mysterious extra exit that seemed like they were gonna be problems to solve. That they then just oh no I just found the I mean, exit no one ever finds. It... Well, okay, that's not entirely true. They were told they they knew they needed to find a uh, room with a, a that had a very specific code. Yeah, and they knew where a room with that very specific code was located. Did they? Yes. Because they talked about the fact that you passed through one particular room, and because of the way the cube, the like the, the dimensions of the yeah. cube are, then that one has to be one of the rooms that is outside the cube. Yeah, we no, yeah, we worked out the right? numbers. The ones, he just didn't yeah. know which exit he was gonna be at. He knew he was gonna be at an exit. Yeah, no, that, that that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that he didn't know how to find an exit. He has an explicit conversation where he's like, ah, there's there's two exits. Both of them are monitored. I've heard rumours there's a third exit, but no idea where. And his companion's like, nah, there's no third exit. Someone would have found it. There's no third exit. It, there just isn't one. There's only the two we know about. Because um, I'm sat here like, why is there an exit that goes unguarded? How, if, if no one has ever found the unguarded, mysterious, it's only a rumour third exit, how did he stumble upon it? It's, it annoyed me a little. It felt like there was going to be a moment of, aha, I've worked out how to find it that just never came. There was a little bit of a lack of payoff. But, like, I do love this terrible trilogy <laughs> of bad films that drop the arsler and... Yeah. <sighs> Cube Zero in particular. Don't pay for it. Watch these films, though. Yeah, no, they're all easy to find, but oh, most of them are on YouTube. Yeah, um. The series has a problem with like really following its tropes from the first film because other because people because that was the only one that was reasonably well written yeah. and acted. Yeah, like they the original creator didn't work on the other two films and they couldn't help but go what were the what were the archetypes you had in the first one we'll do them again. Yeah, it really felt like, like they watched the previous ones and went, "Okay, I have a new idea." Yeah. And I've got this one thing I want to do yeah. that makes it like my thing. Yeah. I'm going to add Super soldiers that chase families through the woods and they've got chips in their heads and they have green lazy guns, PPU. Um yeah. and, and and there's there's a company and we're gonna we're gonna whale in Utani this shit. Yeah. And and look, I have my problems, I have my flaws, I have my things that I think are have not aged well and are kind of offensive. I'm still really glad I watched. I had a really fascinating time watching these yeah. shit as hell films. They're great. Every now and again, you need to watch a shit horror movie. Sometimes you need to watch a film and go like, "I can see this is actively bad. Don't judge me. I'm having a good. I'm having a good time with this terrible fucking." Cube film. is one of the few series that features an awful lot of gore that I still find a really interesting horror film. Because yeah. very often I like, I'm not into gornography at all. <laughs> I love a psychological horror film, and I love a film with a like a really fascinating concept. Yeah. And I think all of the I, cubes manage that. I generally agree with you, except Cube Two. Cube Two goes way too hard on the humans exploding into like blood and meat slush, and I mean, not like really. There's mm. the person that's eaten by the swirly thing. There's the person who has his head uh, swished off. Uh, pushed, pushed, like, yeah. pushed off by a crystal. Uh, he, he's fine. It's the opening completely like, oh no, I've I've dissolved into blood and meat slush. No, it's... that's zero. Pardon? Oh, is that zero? That's zero. Okay, it's okay. It's my the, he's scratching the yeah. back of his. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Zero is the one that goes overboard on the, yeah. on the blood shit. Sorry. You, yes. you can tell that was what what was yeah. it, like a week apart from the first saw. Maybe? It was a week. Ap yeah, it's both. Hmm. It came out a week before the first saw, and I'm a. They were both Lionsgate. I'm amazed no one talks about this. Yeah, series. that one feels way more in the like twisted pictures. 
Yeah. S- section than yeah. either of the other two. We, we watched those back to back, so my apologies for misplacing which one was the, like, oh yeah, it was in the really grim, dark shit, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, Zero gets a bit too blood uh, gortacular in places yeah like uh, as yeah. as as horror as uh, deaths go in like like trap style horror films it... turning someone to into, into literal soup in the first five minutes while they're still standing is is a bit much and then there's the sound trap as well oh god yeah mm. uh, where someone is just like audio shaken to pieces it... um that's I... pretty that's, yeah. that's momentarily it's, it's gory. not overwhelming amounts of it. I'm glad that it happened in Zero, which had its own narrative hook that I found mm. interesting as opposed Zero to Zero spends more time doing traps of um like you barely see anything. Oh uh, I think it's Zero that's got the twisties. Yeah. Which has the like almost um Jesus wept from the end of yeah. Hellraiser. Two- uh, okay, Zero is probably the most yeah. gory of the three. Yeah, one uh, Cube and Hypercube do a good job of being psychological horror where the kills are not lingered on or overly grotesque. Zero doesn't have too many kills, but the kills it has are fucking gross. Um, well done to whoever designed the it, effects because they're very impressive. Again, it all it all follows the fucking Practical. saw. It all follows the saw template yeah. of. You know, oh, we 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 don't have a new idea, so we're just gonna rank it, ratchet up the 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 gore of the kills because yeah. that's how we make the kills interesting again. Yeah. It's like, oh, make the kills interesting, not out of their violence. This, this is why I stopped the program at like episode ten. I was like, I don't know where else to go with this that isn't either really really sick or sexual violence. And I said I would never do sexual violence in this yeah. story. Yeah. So it ends at ten episodes, and I'm perfectly happy with yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's the Cube trilogy. That's Cube. Should oh. we want to talk about a different film? Um, I was going to talk about something that wasn't a film for a few Ooh, seconds. Okay. Um, if you're listening to this, like if it's gone up early on Patreon, this won't be up yet. But I can talk a little bit about it. If you're watching it on Sunday when it goes up for everyone else, um, th- this thing will be up. I started watching an early upload of Sex in Star Trek: Exploring Gene Roddenberry's Sexual Frontier by Jesse Gender. Um, a video in which I appear at the start, oh. reading out some angry, whiny nerd comments, being Uh-oh. all, Yeah, well, that's all um, sex in Star Trek isn't Gene Roddenberry's original vision. Oh, that, no. that kind of shit. Oh no. Uh, so, I, this video is like. these n- tweets from Rick Berman. Uh, it's tweets <laughs> at and about Rick Berman a, a bit. <laughs> um, so, I. I <laughs> I don't want to talk about this too much because obviously, you know, video that's not up yet, but I want to talk a little bit about the overall overall concept and encourage people to go watch it. It is a nearly three hour uh, video essay uh, that was sparked off by, um, uh, yeah, I, you can see the number there, burned, burned in on my screen. bad screen, uh, two hours, 44 minutes, 18 seconds, um, about the fact that Star Trek Lower Deck Season 2, which we haven't watched yet, apparently has a scene at some point that a lot of whiny, Roddenberry-loving nerd boys lost their shit over. Because that was an orgy, there's an orgy scene, briefly, with some gay people doing some, some gay shit. Nice. Um, and a lot of people going, oh, oh, sex in Star Trek, this wasn't Roddenberry's vision. Oh, it bloody was. Yeah, so like, I will talk <laughs> about the very first quote that gets brought up, which is about, you know, the, remember the TNG episode where uh, Picard goes to the Pleasure Planet? And there's that woman that's... Wesley, like, steps on a flower or something. Something like that, they're but they're like, going to execute him, and then they don't. But, like, the, the, there's this whole plot about, like, the woman that wants to fuck him on the Pleasure Planet. Yeah. There's a whole interview quote with Roddenberry where he, like, uh, with an interview uh, with someone who worked on that episode talking about what Roddenberry wanted that episode to be, which was an explicitly gay orgy planet where people, like, men are kissing men, women are, women are kissing women, everyone's got their clothes off. Because I know he wanted Riker everywhere. to be bisexual as well, yeah, didn't he? right? Uh, so, yeah. So there is a bunch of, it's like... Berman who's yeah. the purist. So, like, you know, the, the, the start of this video is talking about this very literal quote of, of you know... Gene Roddenberry's actual vision for Star Trek and looking at this scene from Lower Decks and going... This seems like exactly what Roddenberry's yeah. like. Look, we we can point out shit that that Roddenberry wanted in this TNG episode. It's happened. Look, there's 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 men kissing men. There's the women kissing women. How like this is what Roddenberry wanted, and then it sort of goes into this big. And I, I won't talk about it any further. That is basically the intro. But it is a lengthy video about 
Roddenberry's vision for Star Trek and how that related to sex and the history of sex and pushing ba- boundaries with regards to sex or trying to do so with Star Trek. Um, it's just a real interesting video. Um, what if corruptions of champions in space? I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that'll be going up uh, for everyone on today's, what, the 14th, so... <clears throat> The se- uh, Friday the 17th of December, Ooh. I believe it's going up. I will be in the little chat when it's uh, it's it's first premiering. Um, Do you know what sort of time? Uh, I can find out if you vamp for a few seconds I am vamping me. now. I'm very excited. I, yeah, I've been curious to see, because Laura has this very low quality TV that she uses as a third monitor. Yeah. And I just noticed like right at the beginning of, of sitting down to record... Underneath where I can see <laughs> the the uh, audacity recording our audio, just Michelle Nichols, Beyond the Hura. I was like, that looks yeah. like an interesting book. Uh, and there's a uh, Gene Runry book underneath it. Okay. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which would be like eight hours later, so six in the evening UK Friday. Okay. Uh, it'll be it'll be going live. Um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be real. Um, gonna be real neat. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, go go watch it when it's up. I um, it's a real good video, and I'm really happy I got to to be involved in it. It was real neat. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What you watched? Ah, uh, we watched another film. We did. What did we watch? Well, do you want to talk about the 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 other film that no one should pay for, but we watched it, and it was very interesting. <laughs> what was we that? We watched Brazil. We did watch Brazil. Um, because you hadn't seen it, I can't even remember what brought it up. Was there like a? It was a an clip episode. Of it it was it? an episode of uh, Um Actually on Dropout that yes. had the oh the cover. Yeah, the cover for Brazil, a a film that has nothing to do with Brazil, the country, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah. So don't support this. It's got a bunch of the 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 python, the shitty. Pythons it's made by in Terry it. Gilliam, who is the shittiest of yeah. pythons. Yeah. Um, but like, well, well look. I'm not going to say that you should in any way support this, but it was a really interesting, weird dystopia film. It is a weird dystopia to watch it's, for it's, a while. It is a corporate dystopia, a bureaucracy dystopia. Yes. In like the 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 inciting incident of the film, which I think should give you the tone you need, is um, something like a fly accidentally getting in a typewriter makes a letter get typed wrong, and someone who is completely innocent gets kidnapped by the police. Someone who is completely yeah. innocent is uh, alleged to be um, owing some money yeah. to a certain government yeah. branch. Sh- s- that is not the case. And later on it turns out that that money wasn't even owed. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, he's having his nice you know, family Christmas and out of nowhere hole in the ceiling, SWAT cops come in. Um, he's completely, you know, pulled off. They put um, a bag over his head. Yeah. They chain him up and leave him. Yeah. With his family sobbing and yeah. all the windows broken. Dra- dragged off. Um, he does not survive and is dead by the time that they realise the mistake. And you then follow this bureaucrat in weird bureaucracy hellscape. Who um, is initially just trying to get a check to this poor woman whose husband yeah. was murdered by the but, secret like, police. Specifically, it's like. Uh, it's but it's, mainly so like, that his boss, who's played by you at yeah, home, doesn't get in trouble. And, it, and it's not a like, here is money because we killed your husband. It's here oh, is here is a refund for your husband. It's a refund for the for the, the for your husband the, the 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 husband money like the amount that was thought to be missing. Oh no, here it is. We'll refund you. We'll refund you the yeah. the money this all cost you. And all all she really wants is her husband's. She wants to know where her husband's body is. Yeah, and they're like. Well, that's not my mind. You'll have to go to a different department. So her neighbour takes it on herself to to try and find the yeah. find out, and she spends most of the movie running around various yeah. departments of the the Ministry of Information. Yeah, but then it's also it completely like jumps away from being about that and becomes about this bureaucrat trying to essentially stalk a woman he saw in a dream when he was David Bowie in a suit of armour being Icarus flying close to the sun. He saw a woman, and now he needs to find a way to use bureaucracy to find her. Lancer Licorice Stardust. Yeah, Lancer Licorice Stardust. <laughs> uh, yes. It's, it's um, wild. Yeah, it's... it's it, it, it is a it is a film. There are some weird babies carrying a uh, a floating cage, it, and 
then there's a weird like shogun warrior. I, I will say this about how this film was uh, paced and performed. Um, I saw the ending coming yes. like a couple of minutes before it happened, and you're still absolutely I, devastated. I was still devastated. Like I called it exactly oh. what it was going to be. Didn't in any way lessen how much of a gut punch it was because I was like, I know what's going to happen. I I don't want to believe it. I know it, but I d- they wouldn't though. They wouldn't though. I know they will, but they wouldn't. Oh god, they did. It's fun. It's an effective. The downer is real. It's an effectively done, f- weird yeah. film. Um, oh, there's some shit like some of the the skill with which terrifying, horrific thing happens, and we instantly, jarringly cut over to. Let's just put up a screen and pretend that's not happening. It reminds me very much of the whole, um, and and the British kept going on during whatever fucking war was going on around them. Keep calm, it's keep calm and carry on. Like, a bomb goes off in a restaurant while the the bureaucrat is trying to have dinner with his mother, who is trying to get him promoted and he doesn't want to be promoted. Yeah. Um... And like the, this bomb goes off, and and there's people like screaming and 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 yeah. like on fire in the background, and they just bring in one of these little um, like uh, folding screens and, yeah. and and just oh we'll just gate the fire off. Don't so, worry. Something you said there has made a bunch of points just click in my head. It's it's keep calm, uh, keep calm and carry on as a British energy, the same way that it's utilized as horror in We Happy Few, which is. Keep calm and uh, keep calm and carry on is much easier to do if you can be oblivious, if you can have some degree of denying that the reality is happening. It's much easier yeah. to calm, uh, keep calm and carry on. And in and I think when yeah. we talked about it previously, like uh, a thing I I have thought about Brazil since like seeing that the initial videos for yeah. We Happy Few is like the architecture in that first office is very yes. much like that. Like there's tubes and ducts everywhere and like yeah. the v- the vacuum tubes and again and i think i think both of them use them to a certain degree to be like uh distancing yourself from um the rest of the world you yeah. can sort of pretend the rest of the world isn't happening because the tubes will handle it yeah. and the, like the technology in that world is fascinating as well yeah. like these little these computers with little screens screens and they've all got those magnifiers and the number of times those magnifiers are used in like weird shots of just like the camera's panning around, it's like, yep, you can yeah. see the screen. Now you can see that the screen's actually quite small and they're typing away on a keyboard. Now you can see just their grotesquely distorted face it, from the other side. Yeah, it is It is an interesting film. Don't support it financially. because Terry Gilliam is a horrible transphobic <sighs> sack of shit. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 available. I think that one was also on YouTube, wasn't it? Yeah. I um, believe so. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to support the human being, but no, like but I will watch that once and never again. It is yeah, it's it, that's the thing with I think with a lot of these things is like it's it's a weird spectacle that don't give these people money, don't support yeah. them, and don't encourage them in any yeah. way. But this isn't going to be a thing I bring up if people say what's a great film I should watch. I'm not going to, but you know, I feel like it was an interesting once and I will never promote it again. Yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Um, yeah. I feel no moral obligation to, you know, not pirate shit by nope. transphobes. Fuck them. Nope. Uh, uh, take that, the artist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what about you? Have you got anything else? Oh, we watched the first episode, four episodes of Hawkeye. We did. That was way better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, you, you finally made me give a shit about Hawkeye, even if you really fucking had to do some rush work to get to death hawkeye to get that whole story Mm. going um i will say this i'm really glad it's not primarily a clint barston story um yeah um it's uh oh what's what's a fucking name i've completely forgotten now um kate bishop it's a kate bishop story and she's much more interesting character yeah yeah, I, like if I and I think if I'd have known it was a Kate Bishop story rather than a Kate Marsden, oh, same. Uh, Marsden story, yeah, I would have been like, yeah, uh, I would have leapt on this rather than four uh, episodes in, going, oh, I've got nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I agree. I, I paid so little attention to it. I didn't know it didn't wasn't have a clue. I didn't know it was a, it was a, it was a and Kate Bishop avoided, story. Avoided spoilers. Yeah, maybe well, no mean, one else is watching this I, either. I feel like that might be the case. <laughs> um, but like. 
it's it's good. It's funny. It's yeah. stop it, loud cars. Um, I instantly believed the chemistry between uh, Kate Bishop and and Clint's character far more than I did Clint and uh, Black Widow. Scarlett oh, yeah. Johansson. He's got that... such exhausted dad energy. Exactly. <laughs> like. This needed to happen way earlier in the Avengers, because like, yeah. in the in the MCU, because like this is a little too little. There's a little too late to get me to care about Clint, but hell yeah, I will take a hand off to yeah. so, to a different Hawkeye and go back to a story that doesn't have like super powered aliens and is largely like here is a group of strong thug types. Is she going to be the next uh, rich white person in charge of the Avengers though? Um, I don't believe so. Because, <laughs> like, the whole family thing is like, so she's a privileged my, white girl. Yeah. My my guess is that very specifically, this is going to be a story about her realizing how good she comparatively has it, and how the sort of dream of oh yeah, I'll just go off and so save people is sort of a sheltered, hmm. may not have been ready for the reality. Because like we've already seen some like. I I carelessly went and did a thing without really thinking about it and didn't really know what I was getting into. Yep. And yeah, so I'm hoping that's sort of what it plays with. There's an adorable one-eyed dog. There is, who's actually a one-eyed dog yeah. and on the, the correct side. And yeah. oh, they, they found Lucky a good... the pizza dog. Oh, look at the pizza dog. Such a good dog. Yeah, a good dog. Oh, pizza dog. Yeah. Pizza dog. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so yeah, if, if you like us have just been not bothering with Hawkeye. Hawkeye's worth a watch. Yeah, it's I did... better than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, I did... Look, if you told me the titles of them before I'd watched them, there is no world in which I'd have gone, yeah, Hawkeye's going to be a better show than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> yeah. Infinitely more interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely led... And I think it, it's definitely managed to avoid the Falcon and the Winter Soldier thing of USA, USA, USA. Oh, yeah. This is... What if Die Hard was a series about two superheroes with bows and arrows? I mean, k- kind of. And it's... also there's, like, squatting Slavic Mafia. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen them squat yet, but they definitely have the tracksies for it. Yes. Um, there are some criticisms probably to be made, and I need to go looking for critique by deaf people of this, um, or th- thoughts about it. Hmm. Deafness has definitely been introduced to the MCU very quickly, and the way it's been used for our hero versus the way it's been used for at least one other character are very different, and yeah, there there is definitely some questions yeah. to be yeah. thought of about with that. Oh, uh, um, um, hmm. yeah, I don't want to give spoilers. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to say anything about that. Um, yeah. Maybe next week. Maybe yeah, maybe I... we'll give you all a week to think about I mean, it, and yeah. then we'll give you a hey spoilers. We'll, we'll give you a week to go more. like, hey, look, if you like us didn't bother watching yet, go watch the first four episodes, and then maybe we'll talk about it again and go a hey, skip forward yeah. and yeah a minute, and we will. Well, we'll talk a little next mm. week about some of that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, if we remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Um... I did like the fact that they they differentiated the whole deaf and hard of hearing thing. Yes, yeah, they they specify they they mentioned the difference and acknowledged the difference. Um, because like at least you know I don't think this is major spoilers to just say we sort of jump into this story without any real setup to the fact that Clint is um wearing a hearing aid. Yeah, he's wearing a hearing aid. He he seems to be completely deaf in one ear, but um he has some Well, he's clinically deaf in one yeah, ear. Yeah, he's clinically deaf in one ear. He's got uh reduced hearing in the other that uses a hearing aid in and yeah, they they sort of they they touch on like early stage oops, I'd better start learning some American sign language yep. um on you know, there are some things that I have spoken to people who use hearing aids who or I'm like, okay, that feels that feels like you got that right, and obviously this is me from an outside, like, third partying. Mm. Um the I'm really annoyed with this person, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn my hearing oh, aid yeah. off for a second yeah, and not have you notice like... and just you know, yeah. you just right, I'll turn it back on a second. You often hear that? about grandparents doing it like, yeah, bored of yeah. bored of this family conversation. But like that's that's you know Granddad, there was... you're right. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like it's <laughs> There is some believability, even if it feels like um, 
they were really going to avoid having him be deaf until mm. um, until it was absolutely pivotal to the story, yeah. and not a moment sooner will we address have that yeah. be a thing. I mean, it, I think it is it is fair to say that as a result of of all the things that have happened to him in the MCU, yeah. he has become deaf. Yes, but, or at least hard of hearing. Yeah. Um, but I I think that to not have had that degeneration come up at all previously. Yes, like it's... maybe I would have to watch the MCU again, but I don't remember him being like, oh, as, as best I can tell, one hundred percent this is the first it's come up. Yeah. Um and, and it, it wouldn't have taken yeah. much to like stand up from a blast and have yeah. Clint be like, oh fuck. And it's it's a real shame that this is only coming up when it seems like we're getting a handoff story. Yeah. Because like some of the most interesting stuff from the comics about this, like one of one of my favorite little comic comic moments for like building up Deadpool as a lovely relatable character is, um, a, oh when he yeah. flips his um yeah, bottom he, of his yeah. mask up um he flips the bottom of his mask up so that he can be lip red while he's talking, which is like a step that none of the other Avengers ever seem to think about, and mm. like there's there's little interactions like that I don't think we're gonna get to see, and that's a real shame because mm. like. Mm, we we we're, we're gonna we got in we well, we still haven't yet had enough uh, Deadpool meets any of the rest of the MCU. I I feel like we're really dancing around like that. That's going. To, I feel like particularly the the fact that like we've got like the multiverse of madness film coming up mm. and stuff. Like we're gonna get to the point where it's conceivable and explainable why these characters haven't interacted with the rest of the MCU mm. and how they might end up interacting with the rest of the MCU is kind of my gut feeling. Like, I feel like we're going that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Hawkeye's pretty good. Enjoying it so far. Yeah. What about you? What you watched this week? We watched June. Y yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, I'm glad they didn't try and force six hours of movie into that. Yeah, that is an incomplete story, but I actually could follow what was happening better than yeah. the original. There was much more explanation of why shit was going on. I'm not on. sure how long it was. Like a couple of hours, maybe? It felt pretty lengthy. Um, uh, well, it didn't, uh, the, well the, the thing was, it didn't feel quite so long, but then like I've watched the Spice Diver cut of... Um, uh, two, and, two and a half hours. Okay, that's, yeah. that's about what I would have expected. I, I was gonna guess like somewhere in the three hour range. It's it's not a quick two and a half hours. No, but like I've watched, as I was gonna say, like I've watched like the yeah. three hour forty minute cut of June. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a fan edit from various sources, and you know it's it's a it's a better version of that story, but it's yeah. still rushed. This definitely felt like it was taking its time. It feels like it wanted to be a TV show and maybe it should have been there. It like its pacing is very I feel like I watched three back to back episodes of a TV show watching. Yeah, maybe. That's kind of how it felt pacing was, and that's not bad, it's just Yeah, but I would rather yeah. I don't I don't mind watching it in either format really, because I probably yeah. would have binged that series, I'll be honest. I mean, I, if they've gone, there are three yeah. one-hour specials to watch. Cool, yeah. I will just put that on my I weekend. Mean, I'd, I'd have binged them, but it, you know, it, it is, yeah. Um, I. <sighs> I mean, you were playing Isaac. I was playing Gloomhaven. We just sat there and, <laughs> and we just we just do half watched June. <laughs> I mean, I was I was following a lot. I, I to be fair, yeah. like th that 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 two, one or two matches I played during that that my, film, my, I was my... like. My runs, my runs of Isaac were not uh, were not going well. I was not paying that much attention. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I, I really thought they did a good job of scenes at night with characters in largely dark coloured outfits still being follow black and grey, black and grey, being and followable, gray. followable and trackable, and yeah. like in a way that was kind of impressive. Yeah. Visually, very good film. And that film does scale very well. Yes, it does. Um, it also does um, the 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 dragonfly ships. The ornithopters. Yes, 
Um, really nicely done. Real. Do you, do you want something that looks like a cross between a dragonfly and an Apache helicopter? Yeah, but like, it does that? But like, they, it had all the nice details of like, oh, that looks like a thing that is sealed up properly for flying around in yeah. a basically a sand planet. It looks. Um, it looks like okay. I'm sure physicists will be like, that's never oh, gonna fly. I know, but like, but... it looks like a functional piece it, of equipment. It, it like, looks all of yeah. it. Does. Like the the harvester looks like yeah. this huge chunky piece of technology that it, could actually be doing a it, job it, it it looks like stuff that has had to be around a while and survive being battered and keep, just keep doing its job yeah. without being like oh there's wires coming out of the walls like it, it wasn't overdone yeah yeah it's yes it's, 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 okay. i like the visual detail of the the in combat the the sort of holog- the sort of hollow um hollow, shield, hollow yeah. shields um, having different colour coordination for shield took that impact, shield took that impact, that got through the shield and that has mm-hmm. done damage, really helps make fight scenes follow up all. Yeah. I, I think they've done a, a good job um, conveying that. The um, the one thing I would say is like the colouring in that film is very muted. Yeah. It does have... It doesn't have a piss filter on it. But like a lot of the times, it does feel like that sort of grimy mid two thousands. It's it's got the I can tell you what the color grading Very feels serious like. RPG. It feels like the color grading of a military film in mysterious Middle Eastern country we're not going to name, where we're trying to present it as the whole country is desert. Like that's the color grading at times. Um, I don't think it's that yellow. Because I, yeah. when I think when I think of that sort of thing, I think like this, almost orangey yellow, uh, yeah. really dialed up. But this is like, like uh, it's it's way less saturated than I would have expected. And then you've got like the Harkonnen planet, which is uh, was it uh, the Sudakar? Yeah. Where it's all uh, like rain and like a just a very specific kind of grey. Yeah. And it, without falling into blue tones that you get a lot mm. of films doing, and I thought that was like quite a fascinating change. Um, you've got like blooms of like very light whites. Yeah. Vague tinges of yellow on Arrakis, it's... but it's it's more of a, a yellow than it's, a yeah. Than a... It's... It's a real interesting colour pattern. We, it's not what I expected. Yeah. It's not the bombastic high saturation that I expect out of Hollywood blockbusters. Yeah, I would be interested to see if anyone does a fan edit with like different colour grading on this. Yeah. Um. um it, yeah, it's all right. I, I, I mean, it's it's white people go to the pl- the 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 desert place and try and claim. The fuel of the universe. Yes, the valuable, the valuable resource from the desert place that we must all fight over and not ask the people who live there what they want to do with the resource. I mean, we know what they want to do with the resource. They want everyone else to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Which is their right. But we need the space cocaine because to the empire, fly across space. Because the space. emperor said so. Look, the emperor says I can't fly to Mars unless I have my space cocaine. <laughs> That's basically. No, the... I, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm that's... not denying it. For anyone who's not seen June, that's the fucking plot. We need the we need the powerful plan... white people. We need the planet... arguing over the planet of cocaine. Look, I, can't, I, I can't. I can't. I can't fly to Pluto unless I have the planet of the space cocaine. Yeah. Did we see the the emperor in this? Uh, I think if... we. I okay, think we I did. completely missed that at the beginning. I think we did. I might have to go back and yeah watch the first five minutes because I might have been out getting snacks and things. When we very first put it on, or ch- hanging washing or something? I, I think you were out the room and I summarised the first few minutes as she came in, yeah. Yes, um, uh, I will probably watch the first few minutes and yes. spot the actual emperor. Because <laughs> I'm curious what they did yeah. with that. Um, I can't remember because no visual imagination. Yay! Yay! Yay. Uh, did you watch anything else this week? Um, yes. Vamp, 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 be vamp, vamp. Vamp for time. Vamp for time. I'm vamping for time. Ooh, I watched the, um, uh, people on the People Make Games channel on YouTube, which <gasps> is, uh, Quentin Smith and other people whose names escape me, but Quentin of, yeah. of Shut Up and Sit Down. Um, 
talking about Roblox. Yes. And the problems of fucking Roblox. This, this is specifically a second video from them on this topic. This one's entitled something along the lines of Roblox tried to get us to take our video down. Yeah, so the summary for the, the first video, totally worth watching. I haven't seen the second one yet. I have it saved up to watch before Proposition tomorrow. I watched the second one um, and then watched the first one immediately yeah. afterwards because I was like, yeah. so, I need to know what yeah. happens. So uh, the first one, if I remember it correctly, the summary is basically like, hey, Roblox encourages children to make uh, content for their platform while not explaining to them in any way, shape, or form uh, how unlikely they are to make money, how much they're going to have to pump money into the system to get visible. And in fact, telling visible. them that um, yeah. they will make money. Yeah. Like, and that the highest earners make, like, 12 million. Yeah. So why not pump uh, some money from our weird fucked up ecosystem into promoting your game because you can't withdraw it until it reaches a certain threshold and you don't have enough to, to And when withdraw. you do withdraw, it's company script. Yeah, it's company script, yeah, in that you can withdraw it to real money, but you take such a heavy cut that you might as well keep you it in the, the ecosystem. System. I mean, you're going to need it for promoting your game because the yeah. front store page will only show games if people are already playing it. Yes. And, and even the new games yeah. have already got a few thousand people playing and, them. And this basically is a self-fulfilling cycle that gets children making content for no money that Roblox profits off and the ecosystem builds. Roblox, who has like seven times the, the company value of Ubisoft, so... Yeah, they are they are like fucking... People don't realise how fucking huge Roblox well, I is. I think they're like $46 billion company. Yeah, it's... it's Yeah. So tell me about the second uh, documentary. So the second one is about um, content warning, uh, harassment, um, uh, abuse... And um, uh, some uh, child sex abuse allegations. Oh, God. Yeah. So yeah. there was somebody who was sending very inappropriate messages uh, to, uh, when they were 24, to somebody they knew to be 12. Yeah, Roblox has a real problem with not moderating Mo its Robo uh, child-focused community. Roblox huh? says that if it happens off of the site, and this happened on yeah. Discord, that it's nothing to do with them. Yeah. And you get the situation, I assume, of uh, my game's not making money. I will take my game making skills to work with a team who are off Roblo Roblox. Oh no! Or I am making a game. Other people have talked about, or I have tried to advertise it on like a Discord yeah. server with other people who play Roblox games. People have joined me. I've interacted, or we've, we've been talking yeah. about resources, or people offering to 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 make resources for various yeah. games, and then abuse and stuff are happening outside there uh, people forming companies yeah so like a group of four people working together they they make games together and uh then some of them maybe decide they're gonna just incorporate a company yeah and that other person now can be an employee if they want yeah. But they're not part of the team, and they're maybe not getting the same cut. They could have a salary, though. Yeah. A salary that's considerably less, and, and maybe then just bullying them they're not, that they're not working hard enough, even yeah. though they're a kid. Yeah. Um. Then there's the fact there's a literal stock market on there. Y yeah, apparently so. I did catch this much. Um. So, like, there is there are uh, products that are made, like, here is a face for your character, there's only 5,000 of them, or we're only selling them for, for, uh, for five days. Yeah. And after that, you can only get them by buying them or trading them with other mm -hmm. people. And remember how the auction house yeah, was? Yeah, the Diablo 3 Real Money Auction yeah. House. Yeah. So but you, for kids. But, like, okay, so you bought the face for, like, 400 Robux. Yeah. And now it's not available, and demand has gone up for it a bit, and now it's worth about two and a half million Robux, which is about $32,000. Which is a lot of money for a child to suddenly have real world access to, huh? Yeah. But most of them won't cash it out. They'll spend it within the system if, itself. If, if, if you have an item that got to $32,000 and fucking cash it out, child. Yes. But like, there, but like yeah, so but there the... is an interview with a, with a, a, with a kid who made a game uh, I think it's in the first first one of these videos yeah. where he's like, and I, I I hit the point where I could withdraw, and I would have had like a thousand Australian dollars, yeah. and I would have done this and this and this with them, 
Okay, so what did you do? I bought two cosmetic items, and yeah. then I was slightly under the threshold, so I couldn't withdraw, and I've never made that back up again. And then somebody yeah. who got the hump with me sent me a uh, file saying it was a, a uh, thing for my game. I foolishly opened it without checking it. It ran a script on my system that logged them, allowed, gave them access to my Roblox account. They sold those two items for almost nothing and drained my account. And Roblox said, there's nothing we can do. You sold those items from your account. I believe that was the first video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and Roblox have no interest in, in moderating. So yeah. with regards to the bullying, it's very often a case of a member of somebody who was on a team or is on a team. Yeah. Being harassed because there is a problem with a, a, a game or someone involved yeah. in a game is problematic. Yeah. And then these people, these videos are ending up being videos. So people are being cyber bullied now. Yeah. On top, on top of being bullied within the game. I mean, I suppose that's also cyber bullying. But yeah, I, I get what you on mean. On top of, but like, oh. yeah, this is a problem for a, a huge fucking company that, uh, you know, originally advertised itself as being so that kids can make games for other kids. I mean, and also uh... like when there are stolen resources. Yeah. Uh, like, say, somebody made a Sonic fan game and Sega yeah. said, take it down, we don't want our stuff on your on your system. And Roblox are like, oh, it's not it's not held on here, technically, so we we can't do that. Yeah. It's like, when you can't stop Sega going after you, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> so, content warning, but though those are a couple of interesting videos, especially if you have young'uns, yeah. or young'uns in the family, <laughs> maybe take more care because for some it's being advertised as oh it's just you know like a fun place for kids to play games and maybe learn a bit some programming skills which in yeah. this day and age is a good and important thing it is but also you're learning programming skills in a completely closed ecosystem that isn't really transferable outside of Roblox and if your kid wants to do this teach them other programming tools I mean you can insert like C code, I believe, and lure into Roblox you, games. You can. You have to like uh, go into advanced stuff yeah. from from there. Um, but dev tool, but yeah, you, you're not gonna automatically generally learn transferable skills in Roblox it's, it's itself. Yeah. What else have we got? <sighs> I think that's everything I've watched this week. I yeah. think. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's everything I've watched. Okay then. Well then, time for this. Got any sponsor? Who's our new sponsor? Well, do you wonder about aspects of your personality? I mean, yeah, sometimes. Do you, uh, do you yeah. think maybe like, a bit of personal analysis might be might be worth looking into? I mean, may maybe. Like, it took me until thirty to work out that ADHD was one of the things going on. Like, I've done, but brains are a mystery. Would you like hurt all of know. this, but not Scientology? Oh, that's really... I very much appreciate that. Scientology is not for me. Mm, no, oh, sorry. Oh, I don't want oh. to believe in alien warlord Xenu. Oh. Well, come on over to veryaccuratefreepersonalityquizzes.lol.net Oh, okay. Yeah, you can better understand yourself. You can get insight into the person you are. You just enter your name, your email address, and then you answer this totally free quiz. Give a huge amount of personal data... Uh, about your preferences, that they totally won't sell. They to they literally wrote that we totally won't sell. Oh, yeah. Add your email address for ease of marketing. Wink. They they, they wrote, they wrote wink. wink. Oh, oh god. Um, yeah. Again, just no. Look, Sorry. I I know personal understanding and personal growth is great, these. but like. Look, you really don't want to bundle it up so that the email address and all of your personal info is right next to each... Oh, God, one of the... I'm having a look at the list now. Some of the common security questions are on the list. What's your What's your first pet's name? Street you grew up on? Yeah. These are uh, These are not good personality quiz questions. No. I mean, it's good for them to understand your personality very intimately, but... I mean, genuinely, I think you'd probably be better off with a psych science of... Yeah, no, 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 no. Look, if it's between this and the Scientologist, still, you know, use, still our, do use no, our sponsor. Still do neither. <laughs> like, if you held at gunpoint, use our sponsor, but yeah. like... 
It's 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 a tough call. Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, uh, we got away with it. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. You're so, a fucking genius. I know, right? I, I look. I was watching the uh, the the award show for games. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah, the yeah. award show for games, and I I was I was I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was shaking a little bit. I was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because are look, you sure that wasn't because of the? Because well, the... I mean, I mean, look, it, look. I had been watching Dune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's my kind yeah. of plan. So, like, look. Here is here is the thing. You know. We we've we've been trying to we've been trying to buy off uh, we've been trying to buy off what's his face uh, the the host guy for a yeah, while because yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it's it's not good if if everyone comes excited for games and you know person they all like you know yeah calls us out so yeah. You know, I had had conversations. I was like, you know, please just leave. You know, can we just focus on the games? We love the games. Right. You know, can we We're not about make... the games. Exactly. Games. You know, they've, the gamers deserve to just focus on the games, you know. And yeah, I really, I really worried for a second when he went on stage and went, hey, maybe we shouldn't condone whipping of interns. I was like, oh, God, is he going to is he is he going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really looked like, you know, after all, after all the money we've helped put into that whole thing well i mean look the number of times we've given exclusives so people will tune into the damn show exactly you know i i i really look i i i stopped breathing for a second i held my breath i never do that i held yeah. my breath and went you know uh, is this... i usually pay someone to hold my breath for me exactly and it was fine apparently apparently having someone on the board of the gaming award show is enough to get them to at least not, you know, they didn't mention who we are, they didn't mention what we did, yeah. and we still got to be nominated for all the awards. So Yeah, was... he basically walked on stage, said, hey, the games industry, don't do the bad thing, only do the good thing. Here's Supremacy I... Software with a, a new title, I mean, and uh, I am so excited I mean, that. look, I... I, I was convinced that uh, that we weren't going to get any of our trailers shown. I was convinced we were going to get pulled out of the awards. We still got a Game of the Year in nomination. Hell yeah. I don't know how we managed that, considering the game had barely been out when the voting happened, but I guess people just sort of preemptively voted Plus, for you us. know, we slapped that on the, on the storefront now. Game of the Year. Nomination. Exactly. You. Game of the Year. <sighs> you are a fucking genius. I know. I mean, we're, we're a fucking genius. Yeah, yeah, we are. Hell yeah. So, <gasps> emits, emits, what is in your emits? Uh, what are you listen to? Uh, I'm going to have a bit of a skim through. The main thing I listened to was, uh, I, I listened to my top 100 uh, songs of 2021 from yeah. my Spotify wrapped. It, it told me, hey, here's what you listen to this year. And I always find that interesting. So I've got, I'm not going to go through all of them. There's nearly six hours of music here. But um, my top most listened to tracks include Reverberate by Bears in Trees absolutely fantastic song that builds to one of the most catchy fucking choruses that like just makes everything feel fucking better when it gets there Yay. um it's one i found on tiktok Yay. among a few a few of my top played this year <laughs> were ones that like a really catchy hook was on tiktok and i was like you know what i'm gonna go listen to the actual actual song oh that's fucking good huh uh, another one of those my second most listened to be gay do drugs hail satan by super cassette um, that. It's good. Yeah, it's real. It's real catchy about like, hey, you know, don't you know, maybe don't stick with a religion that makes you hate yourself because it tells you you are eternally going to be a sinner, and you know, maybe just you know do things that are going to be good for good for your mental health, and maybe maybe you know find the people that say that you're doing good, you know, be gay, do drugs, hell Satan, it's great. Um, some other stuff that came up near the top. Um. You're Killing Me by Remo Drive was my third most listened. Really good, catchy, uh, chaotic uh, rock track with some like really nice slow bits in it. It's It's got a really nice pace to its vocal line. I really recommend people check it out. Uh, Against Me's Delicate Petite and Other Things I'll Never Be. Just a really good track for when I'm having a bit of a, you know, yeah. Um, it's okay. Yeah. yeah, my kind of femininity is great, how it be. Yeah. Um... Talking to Myself by Watsky. It's really mm -hmm. high up on their track this year. Um, that is about, you know, hey, look, you got thrown into life and you didn't really know what the fuck was going on and you're making the most of it. Don't beat yourself up. And I'm like, yeah, pretty good. 
Uh, there's a few. There's a few tracks you're probably gonna know in here. Uh, My Sunset, original mix by Faint. Yay. Um, Ghost Assassin, uh, Maduke and Vila. Hmm. Um, uh, what's the the other one that's in here? Uh, Love a Light. Uh, Culture Shock is is real high up. Uh, Follow Me, Shock One. Follow Me. It's real high up. Um, really good track I would recommend called Alien by USS, which is ubiquitous synergy seeker. Very very upbeat, bouncy, uses a lot of electronic sounds in with a sort of rock, um, fast-paced energy to it. Uh, my most listened to My Chemical Romance song of the year, The Kids From Yesterday, apparently. That's this year. Um, I'm apparently in the top 1% of My Chemical Romance listeners this year on Spotify. I listen yeah, to right. a fucking lot of them. Um, Breathe by Champion and Vila. Mm -hmm. Uh, again. Uh, I'm just gonna throw some names out, some good tracks that, like, up the fucking vibe to this year yeah. if you wanna go listen to. Um, Sleep With a Baseball Bat by Cosmic Johnny. Queer As In Fuck You by Dog Park Dissidents. Mm -hmm. uh, Critical Hit which is some, uh, by Ghost Mice, which is some good D&D, uh, &D, you know, don't give in. You know, you never know when you're going to get that, that, that Nat 20 kind of energy. Um, the Man With The Skeleton Arms, just a good bit of uh, storytelling narrative. Uh, by to vaguely country and western. Yeah, by Toke. Um, got a last couple. Uh, the Beer by Kim Yu Dawson. Untitled by the Homeless Gospel Choir. Um, Armchair Anarchism by Not Half Bad. And uh, Ten Simple Murders by the Future Kings of Nowhere. Um, there you go. There, there is a spattering of songs from my year that uh, I apparently listen to a lot and maybe are worth checking out. Mm. What about you? What do you listen to? I found a track on Tickety Talk as well. What did you find on Tickety Talk? I found a song, uh, a song called a uh, TV show called Earth by Philip Labes. Oh yeah, it's, it's a good tune. It's a good, it's a good it's tune. It's a good tune. I went and listened to it on the band camps. Um, I never listened to any of their other music and. Uh, well, I listened to at least one other, a track mm -hmm. called Jeff Found a Genie, which is also very good. Mm, I did go and listen to some more of their stuff. Oh God, what what did you find? This. There's a couple of songs about dating that just sound really fucking entitled. Okay, so no, like, I stumbled upon, like, an actual, like, ah, here's a bad thing that they've definitely done, but just bad vibes. The vibes ain't great. The vibes ain't great. Like, the, there's there's a whole thing about, like, I'm not going to date anymore, um, because, oh, it's just too much fucking hassle, and uh, you... you you keep putting me off. Maybe the person doesn't really want to date you if they keep putting you off, and maybe you should just accept that and stop harassing them. <laughs> Having not listened to the songs, I can't comment. Um, yeah. There's, there, there's a couple about dating that just feel really entitled, and I'm just like, <sighs> oh no, I don't feel good about this as I did at the beginning of the oh, week no. when I was really enjoying the That's other That's a shame, because those two tracks that you had on in the living room were both real interesting, yeah. you know? They both had the good sentiments, the first one being very like, hey, from an outside perspective, we're really fucking up this planet of ours heart a bit, but, yep. you know, to a, like... Um, and what will, what if yeah. aliens are watching us like a TV show, what do they think about it? Um, yeah, what's an exterior perspective on how we're, we're dealing with all this? Uh, and, um, and, and will they care enough to, to maybe watch yeah. a rerun, or once it's over, is it over? And Yeah. The, the, the other one being... Um, about Jeff Bezos having access to infinity everything and fucking pulling really? the ladder up behind still him. still being really greedy. Yeah, like, hey, maybe you could share some of these infinite wishes with everyone else. You're oh no. And you can give them away. Yeah, you can give them away to other people. Like, you will still have just as much of an infinity of riches as you do. You can give away to others and not less than yourself. I won't spoil the ending of that song, yeah. but... Um, <laughs> I, I mean, you know. look, it's a song about Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos <laughs> don't share. Um, yeah. Uh, have you listened to anything else? No, I think that's it for me this week. I am chugging through that Lord of the Rings unabridged. Yeah. Uh, I am about halfway through book three. That is Two Towers book three, not Return of the King. Okay, Lord of the Rings is seven books. It's it's, it's not three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Just for anyone who hasn't actually read it and just gone, but well, it's three books, right? It's not, it's seven. The seventh is the you've, appendices. You've got so much Lord of the Rings to get <laughs> so through. So much more Lord of the Rings to go through. Um, yeah, um, I am 
yeah, like halfway through, they have just found Gandalf again, and they're oh. about to head off to Edoras. So, Hi, Gandalf. We got more places to go. Um, yeah, so we've done like the Ent moot. That was I found that I find the Ents like way more interesting in this than in a lot of other versions because they they get like so cut down as like ah oh, yes more talking tree porn yes yeah okay mm hmm mm hmm we get it you're ecosexual and that's fine but please look okay. look can you make that your own set like its own separate book so we don't ha we don't have too much book porn a uh, uh, tree porn to read right uh, but yeah we are starting to get to bits now that I don't like remember super well and I'll definitely cut out of. Like a lot of other versions of, yeah. of that, so this I like. We're getting to the bits now that I really wanted to, really wanted to listen to in an unabridged form, because yeah. uh, I knew I definitely hadn't soaked them in, because they're at a point in the story when I've usually started to, my brain started to collapse a little bit, like a flan in a cupboard. A poor cupboard flan. Yeah. I love the. I love you, cupboard flan. I love you too. <laughs> uh, uh, well then. Uh, time for this. Are you always buying new books? Yeah. Struggling to get through them all? Mm-hmm. Try Osmo Book. Just stack your to-read pile on top of the stylish Osmo Pad and let the stories infuse into your surroundings. Then marvel as you find yourself absorbing them as you go about your day. No need for uncomfortable earphones, wires, or phones. Just natural book particles right into your soul. Oh, I can feel the books. It is a dark, forbidding world. Inspired by one cassette tape the director had that slowed down unsettlingly when they were a child. Your influence will spread across the land. There's nothing in the world he cannot do. No hill too high, no desert too dry, no road too long, no tide too strong. No bridge too far, he's got a car. No slope too steep, no what you leap. No star too bright, no squeeze too tight. No tail too tall, no brain too cool. No base too low, he'll give it a go. No end to his talents, no sense of balance. No ride too rough, no test too tough, no act too slick, no race too quick. No shot too hot, he'll hit the spot. No style too chic, no joke too weak. No chance too slim, no fate too grim. No foe too strong, no odds too long. No bites too high, he's put some by. No dodge, no doubt. No backing out. Blobby, coming to theaters this fall. Blobby, Blobby, Blobby! Do you know what I want to see more of? What do you want to see more of? Brochure Justice Warriors. Brochure Justice Warriors? Yeah. All right, Larry. All right, Barry. How you doing? Oh, sleepy, mate. Yeah, same. Long day, long yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, has been, has been. Has yeah. been. Uh, you been uh, keep, keeping an eye on... Uh, you you seen, seen the video game stuff that's been going on? Uh, well... There's, wow. there's always something in there. I mean, there's always something, but that it's bloody supremacy software. Oh, I know they're terrible. They are. They're terrible. They are. Well, I, you know, I've, 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 I've been following some stuff about some strike action going on at some, you know, some video game oh, places. Power to and, them. Uh, yeah. yeah, more power to them. And uh, you know, and you know, strikes happen generally across the industry. But like, uh, what one thing I saw being talked about that I don't see a lot of people talk about is the uh, financial difficulty of striking. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We know. Well, yeah, you know, like, I think uh, you know, I think a lot of people would realise this if you put it in front of them. But like, you don't get paid to indefinitely strike, and you know, a lot of the people who are striking are usually people who are not being paid enough. 
And that is a recipe that, you know, kills a lot of strikes early on, because... Yeah, it's, you know, it's siege tactics, you just wait them out. Exactly, you know, if people upstairs can go, yeah, I can't fire you, but eventually you're going to need money, you'll come crawling I've back. I've got I more can... money than you have, I can, I can wait longer than you can. Exactly, exactly. Oh my God. Exactly, but like this, this is why I brought up video games because uh, the particular video game uh, com- a company uh, yeah. that I saw, they're, they're people who were striking set up a fund to be like, hey, look, here is a fund to support us during strike action. Because uh, yeah, 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 nice. you know they strike for a few days and then they you know start getting told you can't use your holiday, you can't use your paid time off, your sick leave or anything, and you know. It's really important you see change in these sort of things. Like, you know, yeah, if, yeah, if you yeah. see a company where people are being treated badly, it's it's all great to be like, yeah, go on, stri- go on strike until they make it better. Yeah. They need support to do that. And yeah, and it's also helping support people within the company in, in a way that they have requested. Because yeah. you'll get a lot of people being like, we're going to boycott, 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 yeah. boycott, 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 boycott. And ultimately, this entry in a franchise might make more money than it's ever made before, and the people on the inside might not feel that really it's done anything well, at all. Well, it, it, it depends. Like, it's one company I'm, you know, I'm looking at their, their strike fund. Like, their workers are in a position, like, it's been explained to me that, like, uh, they cannot legally say, please boycott our company's products. Yeah. You know, while still having a job with which to try and make things better from. You know, it's not to say don't don't do a boycott, but also like this is an actionable thing where they have gone. Here is a thing you can do for us that will allow us to, you know, self-direct action against our employers to make things better. Yeah. Can you support us? And like these things do not happen often. If you see them and you you have the ability, you know, the the excess funds are afford, afford to help help support strike action. Absolutely, because like uh, you know, this particular example I was looking at, those striking workers are using that time to put into working on union action so that they can eventually have a union, so that they can have proper representation and proper oh, power. Did you see that letter? Oh, oh that, that letter. was beautiful. Oh, the one from the bosses where they yeah. were like, oh, don't, don't, don't unionise. join a union. It'll... You won't have any single bargaining. You'll only have collective bargaining. What a terrible thing that would be. Oh, it, look. It, oh. Hey, if you're ever in that position and you're given that, that thing, they're not doing this for your benefit. The higher-ups are telling... trying to scare you yeah, away. They're trying to scare you away because here's the secret. It's not a secret. You have zero solo bargaining power because if you did, you could make things better by yourself. But you can't. That's why collective bargaining power allows you to go, all of us will bugger off and not do your work for you. If you don't do our shit. If solo you know. bargaining pain power worked, you know, people wouldn't be this, you know, this far removed from, from the amount of wealth that the, the people run the company have. Exactly, exactly. You so would never have got this bad. Yeah, so more power to the people currently striking, and I'm glad to see that in this case a lot of uh, financial support has been given to keep yep. them striking and to give them the time to work on union stuff which seems like it's going really well but yeah like, absolutely yeah it's all and like, i'm glad that people yeah. have an opportunity to support them in a way that they themselves have asked for exactly as opposed to you know taking action that is very often sometimes people have said that is actively not in, helping in us. some cases it can be counterintuitive unfortunately but like you know wherever possible listen to what the workers want and do what you can to support them and this, you know. you, like well, like with any uh a direct action it has to be done in in a in a way by those most affected by it have to be the voices in yeah. charge that you are listening to. Like we had the same problem with BLM. We were getting large groups of of like old white Karens yeah. who were being like, "Oh yes, I will take I will take take charge of this particular action." Don't don't do it. No, it's, listen to people yeah. who are most affected. Let them lead the G- charge, yeah. and you know you are there to listen and and to, to help out give, as you can. Give people the tools and the position to do the work they want to do to further their position and support them in doing the things that they feel are going to help them. And absolutely, you know, this is a great opportunity to do that. So yeah, support support striking workers, but like you know, not just like yeah, I'm I'm glad you're striking. I hope you get better things. Put your money where your mouth is if you can afford to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, hug mate. Yeah, yeah nice, nice. Yeah, good up, good luck. All right, oh, I think I'm going for a lie down. Yeah, same, same. Nice, nice. <laughs>
So, Laura. Yes. Uh, we got a book. We do have a book. We got a book. Uh, we've either hit or are about to hit 70%. We're right around 70%. We had a We're we right could... around 69%. Nice. Uh... Can you get us to 69%? Are you the nice one? I, I mean, all of you are nice, but <laughs> are you nice? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's called Who Hunts the Whale. It is. It's a satire about the video game industry. Yeah. Um, it's it's a, it's an amusing book. It'll it's make full you... of humor and heart, and it'll and... make you hate executives and CEOs and capitalism. But but love people but, who actually do yeah, any work. Exactly. It's it's a it's a lovely story. I'm very proud of it. Enjoy all the fun fake made up video game names we came up with, the... and all the fake energy drinks we came up with. Oh my god, those fake energy drinks! <laughs> oh my oh, just just wait until the energy drinks start coming in new forms. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, nom nom. Uh, you can support the book by uh, pre-ordering a copy on Unbound. Uh, you can find it by searching who hunts the whale on unbound uh where you can go to unbound.com forward slash books forward slash whale uh you can get your name in the back of the book in all the copies so everyone knows you help support it you can get a signed copy you can get an ebook copy you can get a swag bag of supremacy <laughs> software swag that's such a good bag oh it's so good i want i want i want that swag i kind of want that bag i want that i want that bag uh yeah, or if you missed any of my my previous books with with Unbound, you can get a bundle that has those signed as well as our new book together signed. Oh, heck yeah, as a signed book bundle. Yeah. Uh that, yeah, that's 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 the thing we're doing. Go give it some support. Some, yes. Show it some love. Please. Yeah. Uh, where else can we find you on the internet? Uh, Laura K Buzz, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Patreon. That's the one that pays the bills. Um. The main thing I do is every Friday I do episodes of Accessibility. It's about accessibility and representation in the games industry. Um, go give it a watch. I did an episode about shiny hunting recently I'm very proud of. Uh, I also streamed on Twitch Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm UK, 5pm Eastern, 2pm Pacific. There's a bunch of other stuff I do, but I'm going to throw it over to Jane. What do you do? Where are Me, you? Me? I am... I'm generous magnet dale i can be found at patreon.com slash stoned monkey radio for as little as a dollar a month you can help me justify 76 or longer hour work week uh which would be lovely because i am exhausted and not feeling very well uh, but i am trying the best to keep chugging out all that content for people to have all the good things to enjoy um yeah, so we've got uh, streaming over on twitch.tv slash Janiac. You can come around and hang out with the Sexy Potato Squad. We've been playing a lot of Gloomhaven the together. Sexy Potatoes are a wonderful community you should go hang yeah. out with. Uh, you also have a lovely Twitch streaming community. We yeah. have a lot of crossover. We do. We have lovely, lovely communities and they're we lovely do. to hang out yeah. and chat with. Um, and they're very welcoming, so don't feel afraid yeah. that it's going to be too clicky or anything. Yeah. Come come join and, and pull up a potato. Uh, yeah. Uh, all of my links can be found at streamerlinks.com slash Janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C. Um, you can get, like, my t-shirts and my red bubble and listen to music I've made and all sorts of things. Yeah. Uh, so, Laura, <gasps> sing us out, please, darling. Oh, until next time, be a stranger. <laughs>